Chapter Three: The Creepy Bathroom Girl. The next day, classes began. The day went on slowly. Each teacher announced what the class was going to be about, and then played some kind of name memorization game. Some even had an activity so the students could get to know each other better. It was very boring. Fortunately, Harry, Hermione, and Ron had lots of classes together. Towards the end of the day, they sat in a class for what seemed like hours. Professor Squirrel droned on and on. The class was called Wand Safety. The wand part sounded kind of interesting, but as he read the syllabus, they learned the entire class would be about trying not to poke people in the eye with their wands. Ron and Hermione fell asleep, while Harry tried but failed to pay attention and stay awake. Everyone was awakened by the professor slamming a textbook down on someone's desk. Wake up! This is important. He put the textbook down and continued talking. Ron sat up and raised his hand. Yes, Mr. Squirrel replied. Ron held something in his hand up to the professor. Does this smell funny? The teacher reluctantly leaned in to smell whatever he was holding. You might have to get a few big whiffs. The professor did as he was instructed and then collapsed on the ground. Everyone gasped as they silently stared at their unconscious wand safety professor, panic written all over their faces. Hermione looked at Ron in disbelief. You just drugged our teacher. Yep, you're welcome. She said nothing for a moment. Okay. Should we seek medical care? Harry asked. Ron stood up and stretched his arms above his head. Nah, he'll be fine. As soon as he regains consciousness, he'll be high as a kite. The room calmed down a bit, despite the teacher being unresponsive. A few people stood up and walked around the room. Hermione rose from her seat as well. I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. She walked out of the room. A student turned around and looked at Ron and Harry. Hope she avoids the closest one. Why is that, citizen? Moaning Joanne lives in the girls' bathroom just down the hall. The student answered. Who's that? Ron asked. Rumor has it she walked in and never came out. She's been crying there ever since, so no one uses that bathroom. That sounds awesome! Harry exclaimed. Let's go check it out. Ron said as he and Harry started walking to the door. But I heard she has deadly wizard lasers. The student shouted. Ron stopped in the doorway and turned towards the student. If she walked into a bathroom one day and never came out, why would she have lasers? He turned back around and walked out the door. Harry and Ron wandered around looking for the bathroom. It took longer than expected, and they almost got lost. Luckily, Hermione was walking back to class. Was there a girl crying in the bathroom? Ron asked. Uh, yes, actually. How did you know? Did she have lasers? Harry asked. No, of course not. Why would she have lasers? Will you take us to her? Ron asked. No, it's a girl's bathroom. You are guys, and I don't know if I trust you two around sad people. What? Harry asked, slightly insulted. She pointed to Harry. You'll probably say something insensitive. She then pointed to Ron. And you'll probably offer her drugs. Hey, I already used all my drugs on the teacher. But yes, I would suggest drugs. We know where she is already. It's not like we almost got lost. We're going to go see her whether you come with us or not, Mud. Harry stormed off in the wrong direction. Harry, it's over here somewhere. Ron called. Why do you want to see her so badly? Someone in class told us about her. We wanted to see if the rumors about her are true. Harry answered as he walked back to the group. Oh, really? The answer is still no. Hermione decided. Ron and Harry started sprinting in the direction of the bathroom. Hermione took off after them. The three of them arrived at the bathroom. Hermione tried to drag them away, but Ron grabbed both of her arms. She pouted and watched Harry walk up to Moaning Joanne. Hello, Moaning Citizen. We come in peace. Lasers are not necessary. Hermione rolled her eyes. Hello, Harry. Ron. Moaning Joanne greeted. How did you know I'm the great Harry Potter and that these are my two wizarding companions, Ron and Mud? Hermione's pouty face turned into an angry glare that could turn anyone to stone. I created all of you. Harry looked sideways. You've got a few screws loose, don't you? What makes you so sad? Moaning Joanne's lip began to tremble. This world, everything I wanted it to be, has been ruined. There was supposed to be magic and heroic characters and mystical creatures. She paused for a moment to let some tears fall. That's why I stay here. I don't want to see anything else that has been ruined. Everyone tried to figure out what she was saying. Huh? Ron commented. For example, my name was supposed to be Myrtle. There was supposed to be alliteration. She sobbed. At least, I have the number seven. I love the number seven. It's always right there, right between five and eight. The magical number seven. Did you know that's why you have six siblings, Ron? Your brother Charlie is just filler. That's why there's no official picture of him. He didn't get into the movies. Harry walked back to the doorway. Definitely a nutter, he whispered. And she's terrible at maths. As Moaning Joanne sobbed, 
Ron let go of Hermione and they all went back to class. Hermione was still mad about a lot of things. They found their classroom and looked inside. The teacher had woken up and he was throwing textbooks. The group didn't go in the room. They instead kept walking and skipped the rest of class. The end of the day came and it was time for Harry to try out for the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Do you want to watch? Harry asked his friends. Sure, Ron answered. I wouldn't miss it for the world, Hermione replied, starting to laugh a little. They traveled to the field and sat on the bleachers. Soon, an older lady stood up and began to speak. My name is Minerva McGonagall. I love monocles. Oh, and I heard I'm the head of the House of Gryffindor. A few people cheered upon hearing the name Gryffindor. We need some skilled blokes for our Quidditch team. Love that word. My favorite word. Use it all the time. As much as I can. Just rolls right off the tongue. Bloke. 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 As she repeated that word, the students that were trying out invited themselves onto the field. Realizing she was still supposed to be giving directions, she made two teams and announced the rules. She directed people to their positions and started the game. They stood on broomsticks and pretended to fly. They ran around the field trying to score points. They all watched out for the snitch. Someone somewhere was the snitch. They could be in the bleachers, or the field, or even in the building. The snitch holds a golden sphere with bat wings called the golden snitch. Their job is to protect it. The game ends when either team finds the golden snitch. You can do it, Harry, Ron cheered. You're the best squid ditch player there is, Hermione cheered while holding back another laugh. A massive man with long black hair and a bushy black beard sat down behind them. Go, Harry, he yelled. Which one's Harry? Hermione turned to look at the man. He's the teeny tiny one playing as a seeker. He looked around the field and saw Harry. Look at that, it's brick wall kid. You know him? Hermione asked. I know all the wizards. Sometimes I don't know their names at first. He stared at Hermione. I don't know yet at all, though. Ron stopped sniffing something and turned to look at him. Hagrid? Brosif, what are you doing here? I work here as the gamekeeper. But how do you know Harry and Ron? Hermione asked. I was the one who told them they're wizards. That's part of me job. I tell kids that they're wizards. You're the reason why so many people believe they're wizards? Hermione realized. Yeah, I am. Anyway, I've got to go. But I'll be around. Hermione watched as he walked away. How could he just lie to dumb kids like Ron and Harry? She muttered to herself. Eight! Someone called. Too soon they were standing right in front of Hermione. A Ravenclaw with long brown hair achieved a disgusted look from Hermione. Friend of yours? Ron asked. No, Hermione said bluntly. We've been looking all over for you. Welcome to Hogwarts, Granger 8. Who are you? Ron asked. Are you friend or foe? Foe, Hermione said as she tried to nudge her away. Friend, Ron answered. So good to hear that you have a friend, Eight. She looked at Ron and held out her hand. I'm Granger Six. Hermione stopped shooing the girl away and stared at her with a furious expression. I told you, my name is Hermione. She gave a nervous look and slowly gave a weak nod as she withdrew her hand. Yeah, um, we wanted to have a sort of meetup. We've been looking forward to your arrival for ages. Finally, everyone in our gen is here at Hogwarts. Weird that you're in Gryffindor, though. We thought for sure you'd be in Ravenclaw with all of us. I'm not in your creepy generation cult. My name is Hermione, and for now, I unfortunately happen to be a Granger. If you bother me again, I'll put a curse on all of you. So stay away. No exceptions. Tell the others. Six looked like she had been punched in the stomach. Her eyes filled with tears, and she ran off. Ron, who had somehow been able to pay attention to the conversation while inhaling drugs, looked horrified. That was my cousin. And you hate her because? I don't hate her. I just don't like her. You wouldn't understand. They continued watching the tryouts. McGonagall watched everyone very closely. She sat in a chair next to the field writing notes on a clipboard. Harry stood in the field trying to figure out who the snitch was. Soon someone walked in front of the bleachers wearing a cloak, catching Harry's attention. He walked towards the person and noticed they were holding something. Harry knew this had to be the snitch. He ran towards him and yelled, Snitch! McGonagall dropped her clipboard on the ground as she heard Harry. She jumped onto the table in front of her, scaring the black and white cat who had been sleeping on it. Tackle! She screamed. Tackle! Everyone in the bleachers stood up and cheered. Harry and the other team's obese seeker chased after the snitch, but Harry got there first. Obviously. He pushed the snitch to the ground and everyone cheered. Burn the snitch! McGonagall screamed, jumping up and down on the table as the cat hissed at her from the ground. Where's the golden snitch, snitchy citizen? Harry demanded. I'm not a snitch, I'm just here to make a delivery. The person showed that his coat was concealing drugs. Where's Ron Weasley? Ron hopped down from the bleachers and walked towards the dealer. Oh, thanks. Ron gave him a roll of cash and took a bunch of drugs. 
He returned to his seat on the bleachers, and the dealer got to his feet and limped away. The crowd booed, and the game continued. McGonagall got off the table and picked up her clipboard. She sat back down and continued to scribble notes. The cat stayed on the ground and fell back to sleep. Harry returned to his position at the center of the field. He continued looking for the snitch while the other team seeker glared at Harry. It made him very uncomfortable. He tried to avoid eye contact and hoped the game would be over soon. The rest of the players kept scoring points. It didn't matter, though. It's obvious that McGonagall wants to see the snitch be tackled, so for this tryout match, the snitch will have to be found. Harry looked around, but he didn't see anyone suspicious. He noticed the crowd had lost their energy, and a few had even fallen asleep. The players had also gotten more tired and bored. Harry, too, was bored. There wasn't much for him to do but look around. In the corner of his eye, he could see the other seeker doing something odd. He drew his finger across his throat and used the same finger to point at Harry. His blue eyes were full of malice, and his eyebrows pointed down, making a crease in his forehead just above his nose. His blonde hair was neatly combed and parted. His face was round since he was extremely fat. Harry was about to run away out of fear, but then he realized that superheroes must be brave. He started walking forward down the field. He walked straight towards the other seeker who crossed his arms and started laughing. Harry stopped in front of the other seeker and stood in his best superhero pose. I will send you to prison, evildoer! The other seeker's amused expression turned into a more serious one. I'd like to see you try. He got off his broomstick and held it as a sword. Harry knew what he had to do. He too got off his broomstick and held it high. He's ready. The seeker took one swing and hit Harry, knocking him off his feet. Harry got angry. He jumped to his feet and tried to hit the seeker. They battled for a while in the middle of the Quidditch field while the tryout match continued on. McGonagall was first to move her attention from the tryouts and to the seeker battle. Her cheers woke most of the people in the bleachers, and they began to watch the heated battle, too. Some of the players even stopped to watch. Soon, only a couple of people were still playing Quidditch. A person wearing a cloak sat on the bleachers and wasn't amused by the battling seekers. Is anyone going to look for the snitch? McGonagall didn't care about the game anymore. Shh! No one cares about the safe Quidditch match! We could see some real violence and death here! She didn't take her eyes off the fight, even when she got popcorn from her bag. She shoved popcorn into her mouth as she excitedly watched. The fight went on for a while, and they both were tired. Harry knew how important this fight was. He needed to show he's the right person to be the protector of Hogwarts. He needed to show he's a good superhero and that he'll use his wizardry for good. He also needed to arrest this supervillain. Surrender, scoundrel, for I am Harry Potter, protector of Hogwarts! Wait a minute, I know that name, the seeker exclaimed as he fought. You're my lame cousin! The same person wearing the cloak walked towards the fight. Hey, I'm the snitch. You gonna do anything? Everyone ignored his comment. Harry continued his conversation with the other seeker. You're mistaken, rapscallion. I don't have a cousin. The person wearing the cloak threw the golden snitch at the ground and stomped away. Yes, you do. I'm Dudley Dursley, your mum's sister's son. We're the best wizards of all. Your family was kicked out because you're muggles, which means you're just a mudblood. What did you just say? I am not a mudblood. Well, you're certainly not a pure blood. Dudley fought with a smug grin. The only mudblood around here is mud. Right, mud? He looked to the bleachers and found out she was one of the people who were still sleeping. Ron was next to her, inhaling his new drugs. See, look how different we are. She's a mudblood and I am certainly not. Your parents are muggles. That makes you a mudblood. I am not a mudblood. Harry got a second wind and started fighting harder. In the bleachers, Hermione woke up from Harry screaming. She looked at the field and saw the madness that Quidditch tryouts had turned into. What on earth has happened here? Ron looked at the field. Oh yeah, everyone got bored of Quidditch, so they all decided to watch Harry beat up his cousin with a broomstick. What? Hermione looked at the person fighting Harry. Hey, I remember him from when he was being sorted. He made a big speech about being the greatest wizard ever, and then he was sorted into Ravenclaw. What's he doing at Gryffindor Quidditch tryouts? Hermione's confusion was interrupted by McGonagall. Beat him to the ground! End his miserable life! She was back on the table and she kept screaming. Hermione watched as Harry knocked Dudley down and continued to hit him. Yeah, and I'm the one on probation. She climbed down off the bleachers and ran towards Harry as Dudley was held at broom point. Harry, stop! Whatever this person has done, you shouldn't murder them! Harry whined in protest. Aw, why not? Because murder is bad! Boo! McGonagall yelled from the top of her table. What about just a little? What would be a little murder? Hermione asked the professor. There will be no murder today. The crowd booed. 
You are all horrible people. Professor McGonagall, come down from there and decide who's getting on the team. Harry, put the broomstick away and help your cousin up. The crowd scattered and Harry told Hermione what had happened. Dudley turned to Hermione. He called you a mudblood. Harry got mad again and looked at Dudley. Because you called me a mudblood. Dudley looked at Harry. Because you are a mudblood. And so is mud, Harry said. Hermione interrupted them. What's a mudblood? Ron stumbled towards them. It's the name of a drug. (laughs) No, it's not. I lied. Dudley started cackling. Harry, you just said, and so is mud. End quote. You just agreed that you were also a mudblood. That's not what I meant. I just... You can't get yourself out of this one. Dudley started dancing around. My family is the best wizarding family, and I'm the best wizard. Harry glared at Dudley. You're just a supervillain. A supervillain? Ha! Dudley scoffed. You're the supervillain. I am not a supervillain! Harry picked up his broomstick and was prepared to start hitting Dudley again. Hermione grabbed the broomstick from Harry and threw it across the field. And you? She looked at Dudley. Stop being annoying. Ha ha, she's on my side, Dudley, Harry said smugly. Yeah, cause she's your girlfriend, Dudley teased. Hey! Ron shouted from across the field. Harry was very offended. You know that we're eleven, right? Besides, I would never date someone who's on probation. Hermione threw her hands up in the air. Nope, that's it. I'm done. She began moving towards the castle. Don't kill each other, she commanded as she walked. Harry did as he was told and did not kill his cousin. Eventually, Harry and Ron went to the cafeteria to eat dinner. Towards the middle of their meal, Harry noticed Hermione approaching their table. I knew you'd return, Mud. She sat down with her food. Well, I am on probation. But you still left in the first place? Harry smirked. Hermione didn't say anything. She ate her food and didn't regard her departure for another second. After dinner, they went back to the common room as they usually did. Harry looked at the flyer for his missing pet. I'm never going to find Rock. Hermione looked up at him. Yes, you will. He has to be here somewhere. Someone has to know something. Rocks can't walk off on their own.